Hey guys, Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Well, it's that time of year again where Skylum Software is having a summer sale on Luminar 4. In the sale, you could save quite a bit of money if you purchase Luminar 4 and they're bundling it with a set of planets that you could use in the AI Augmented Sky filter and or a set of skies that you could use in the AI Sky Replacement filter or you could even get Aurora HDR as well and save quite a bit of money. Now, whenever Skylum has these sales where they're bundling in this other product, I get a lot of emails from people. For example, this morning, I already got an email from a gentleman who purchased uh, the bundle with the planets. And he was asking me, how do you install the planets into Luminar 4? Well, instead of typing out the answer to these questions over and over, I figured I'm going to do this video. And in this video, I'll explain how you do all this stuff. And then I could just point everyone that emails me to this video. Now, as far as the sale is concerned, you could see it's here. It's on for uh, five days as of the making of this video. And you could save quite a bit of money. Also, my discount code works as well. And with my discount code, you'll save another $10 off these prices. All of that will be listed in the description below this video. Also, if you own a previous version of Luminar, they have special pricing for upgrades so you could save quite a bit of money. I'm not sure if my discount code works here, but definitely give, give it a try. Um, and also, if you already own Luminar 4 and you just want to buy the planets or the skies or anything else, you could buy those as well at reduced prices. Now, I mentioned that the email I got this morning, uh, he was asking me, how do you install the planets? One of those bundles includes um, a bunch of planets that you could use in the AI augmented sky filter that is in the creative panel. Now, you don't really install the, fil uh, the planets or the skies for that matter. What you need to do is when you buy these bundles and you install Luminar 4 and you have the folder of planets, just put them somewhere on your computer where they're easily accessed and you will know you know where they are because then the way you would use them is you would open the AI augmented sky filter go to object selection and of course it's not one of the built-in ones these are the built-in um, augmented sky objects that you could put in there you go down to the very bottom load custom image and then navigate to where it is on your computer. Now I have an image of Mars on my desktop. And then click open and it will plop it right into the image. Now, it doesn't remember it. So next week, if you have another image and you want to add this same image of Mars in that second image, it's not going to remember where it is. You're going to have to again click this top drop down, go all the way down to the bottom, load custom image, and then go to the custom image uh, location and load it in there. So it's just something the way it works. So you don't install the planets. You just plop them on there as I did here. And then you have control over it. The amount slider is like an opacity slider. The warmth slider, you can make it warmer by moving it to the right or cooler to the left. Relight kind of makes it more prominent if you move it to the left and kind of fades it a little bit if you move it to the right. You see that? It's, it's more of a subtle, uh, I guess, control. Then if you click on place object, you could actually resize it and move it around. So you could move it, just grab it and move it around. You have handles, as I mentioned, so you could uh, resize it like that. So if you want to make it smaller or larger. Also, if you want to flip it horizontally or vertically, you do that here. What you would do is you would go to any of the lines between any of the two handles. And you can see how the cursor turns into that horizontal arrow. Then you would just do that. So you would, re, you know, just in this case, I'm flipping it horizontally. And if you want to uh, flip it vertically, go to one of the other handles at the top or bottom, and you can flip it vertically as well. So um, that you could go to advanced settings and you could, um, if it's not plopping in the sky properly like it's go in front of a tree and it should be behind a tree or something like that you would go at mask refinement to help improve that and then if you want to blur it a little bit you would just go to this defocus slider as well so those are the controls you have but again um, you don't install these in the application uh, you just 
uh, know where they are. Put them on your computer somewhere where you know where they are and they're easily accessed. And then you'll be able to pick them one by one and add them to the image. Same thing with the skies. They have a package that includes Power of Nature, pack full of 20 fierce and magnificent stormy skies. Now, if you do that, you would use the AI sky replacement, and it's the same type of thing. You go to sky selection. You're not going to use a built-in sky. You're going to load a custom sky image. I have one on my desktop called Dramatic Sunset. I'll click on that, and it will just plop it right into the sky area of this image. And again, it doesn't remember where it is. So a week or two later, if you want to use the same sky in a different image, you're going to have to do the same thing. Go to the top drop down, go to load custom sky image, navigate to where it is on your computer and load it in. And with this, you have a little more control. You could do some horizontal blending. This is down like at the bottom. See down here, I have this light area. So I could move this and try to eliminate that or make it less prominent or whatever I do to try to blend it better down at the horizon area. Horizontal position, I can move it up or down. Like that. Uh, we could relight the scene, which kind of just kind of relights everything to make it look maybe hopefully more realistic. Uh, sky Global, this is the, um, the adjustment of the original sky in the background. You can make that brighter or darker, and it will affect the sky that you just dropped on it. You can see that. When I move it to the left, it's making that original sky more prominent. If I move it to the right, it's making it less prominent. If I go to advanced settings, uh, if you have any gaps, you would use the closed gaps. Sky local, uh, again, is pretty similar to the other adjustment uh, that was sky global. It will make uh, the original sky more prominent or the new sky more prominent. In this case, it's not doing much for this uh, sky. Uh, defocus can make it blurry if you want. You can flip the sky horizontally if you do that. And um, you could add some atmospheric haze if you want. You could uh, adjust the temperature of the sky. If you move it to the right, you make it warmer, left, cooler. And exposure, you can make it brighter or darker. So those are the controls. You have a little bit more control over the sky than you do over any objects using the AI augmented sky filter. But as you could see, um, very effective. It does a nice job. So that's the point of this video, just to kind of give everyone an overview of how you would use this product in Luminar 4. Again, the main thing is you don't install it inside of Luminar 4. Just in, put these planets and or skies or whatever it is you're purchasing uh, from them or even from third parties. If you buy a sky, you know, a bundle of skies from a third party, they don't install into Luminar 4. Just put them somewhere on your system. Uh, where you know where they are and they're easily accessed and then you could access them through these filters. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>